Hello, everyone, and welcome to Artwork Archives, Art of Collection Management webinar, Manage Your Art Collection Locations and Loans with us, Artwork Archive. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. A few housekeeping items before we jump into the webinar. This may be old hat by now for many of you, but a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and I will share both a recording and slides, which have some resources at the end, uh, most likely tomorrow midday via email that will come from me. So you will receive the recording and the email and the uh, resources tomorrow midday. We have set, saved time for questions at the end of the presentation. So please submit your questions within the QA icon, which is located at the bottom of your screen. If you are on an iPad or mobile device, you might have to have to hit those three dots in order to access it. Introduce yourself via chat, see who else is here. Maybe you know someone from a neighboring town or from a conference. And please use chat for any technical support needs. My teammate Cassidy is uh, sitting in to assist as needed. And if you need access to captioning, you can click live transcript on your bottom panel, uh, then select show subtitle. And the automated transcript is available to those on Zoom desktop or the Zoom mobile app. And it is available if you're on the 5.0.2 version or higher. And our contact, if you need access to us at any time. And intros. I'm at the top, so I'll, I'll go first. My name is Elysian McNiff Kogelmeyer. I'm thrilled to be joined uh, by my esteemed panelists uh, who will have an opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, I am the head of growth for Artwork Archive, been with the team for about mm, six or seven years now, six years. I am a fair skinned, uh, redheaded woman uh, sitting in uh, my office. Uh, with a bookshelf in the background, wearing a brown shirt. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. I am located in Denver, Colorado, and I want to acknowledge that the traditional territory that I am on is of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute Nations. A little bit about me personally, I am the daughter of artists, art therapists, and art educators, so the creative process has always been in my blood. I have worked in the arts since graduating from Middlebury College, and an expedited version of my CB is that I've worked in art museums, I've run a public art program, I've made online art classes, uh, served as curator, written for art publications, and I got my master's in public humanities at Brown University. And I am so grateful and lucky to work with arts organizations like yours uh, within the work I do here at Artwork Archive. Alicia, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello. Uh, my name is Alicia Curlin. My pronouns are she, her. I am a fair-skinned person with glasses. They're round glasses. I'm sitting against a white wall. I have lipstick and um, always wear earrings. I'm wearing round earrings as well, an orange shirt. Um, and I have short, brown, messy hair. Um, I'm calling in from the Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art in Las Vegas, which is on New Wu or Southern Paiute land. Um, so I am very happy about this. I am an artist, <laughs> a mother, uh, and an executive director. Um, I have my painting degrees from Knoxville, Tennessee, and an MFA from Bard College. I came out to Las Vegas about 10 years ago. I was only supposed to stay for eight weeks that that didn't stick <laughs> and uh, i um i started here at the marjorie barrick museum part time as the collections manager um and everything else there are only two staff members and um i've worked in just about every role um at this museum and now i'm the executive director and fortunate to work with a small and mighty team there you go <laughs> thanks katie Hi, I'm Katie Curran. I am also a fair-skinned woman with dark hair, lots of grace showing through. I am at a home office, but showing a photograph of one of our main campus buildings at Cleveland Clinic called the Tossig Cancer Center. So you can actually see artwork behind me uh, by Rana Begum and Elise Ferguson. 
I have been working at Cleveland Clinic for more than 12 years. I am currently the art collection manager, but like Alicia have started, had started in other roles, fine art registrar, a program coordinator, a assistant curator, and now collection manager. I also am an artist and a mother, um, you know, came into the art world as a maker uh, and then got degrees in fine arts at University of Dayton and got an arts management degree at Carnegie Mellon University because I really wanted to work with other artists and help show their work. Um, I really enjoy the work that I do in healthcare. It's, it was sort of an unexpected um, environment, um, but one that the patients and the visitors also aren't expecting artwork. And it just feels like a very rewarding place to be and to show these world-class artists and happy to be here today as well. I've been using Artwork Archive for a couple of years now and find it very useful. Awesome. Thank you for the wonderful intros. And I should add, I'm also a mother. And I, since I'm working from home, um, we may get a four and a half year old uh, very excited about his Legos and his grandmother visiting. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see uh, the joys of working from home these days. Um, a little bit about Artwork Archive. Um, or rather, you know, what is Artwork Archive? We are an online art collection management system used by organizations like the Marjorie Baird Museum of Art and Cleveland Clinic, as well as individual collectors and artists to help them organize, manage, and showcase their artworks. Um, and I'll pause here and say that for this discussion, especially since we are talking about location tracking and loan status tracking, we will be using Artwork Archive for examples, uh, Katie and Alicia use us. Uh, and so best practices within our work archive for those that are um, using us currently and for those that are new to us, you know, a sneak peek into what we do, but also hopefully tools that you could take if you're using um, a different database, um, a different collection management system for your art collections. And I'll also note, we released it in um, uh, our announcement of this webinar, but I'm really excited that um, I will be showing you a sneak peek of our new loan tracking features, uh, not yet released. I'll be showing it to you on staging and it's coming out later this week. And so you all will get a sneak peek of that, which I'm excited about. So with that, I wanted to give time uh, to both Katie and Alicia to tell you a little bit more about their collections, their institutions, so you can get a sense of why they are on this presentation about location and loan tracking. Katie. Um, so Cleveland Clinic was founded in 1921. We just celebrated our centennial year two years ago. Um, they've been integrating at least performing arts and some version of the arts since the beginning, but it wasn't until 2006 that an internal art program was established um, with our former director, Joanne Cohen. And now we are um, nearing uh, almost 7,000 artworks in the collection. Um, so these are spread throughout our campuses in Northeast Ohio, but also all over Florida, Las Vegas. So we have a Las Vegas connection there. Uh, Toronto, we just opened a new hospital in London at the beginning of the year. And we also assist with the art that goes into the location in Abu Dhabi. So we are based in Cleveland, but we, are, we have a global reach. Um, so we have oh, done over 45 site-specific commissions. Our artists hail from 86 different countries, and we pride ourselves on uh, our percentage of people that identify as she, her as 40%. That is a, a higher number than many museums. Uh, we also have a, a very regional uh, scope to our collecting. So we have 24% in our collection have ties to Ohio. We kind of do a mix of established and emerging artists, you know, people that are, you know, world renowned like Yoyu Kusama, um, and then also just sort of our emerging artists working in the local market, you know, people we're supporting from local galleries here. Um, and we also have a large fine art poster program, including things that we do um, to reproduce images in our collection. And I can actually show you later how we track those in Artwork Archive. Awesome. And I have a few more images to show. So you mentioned Yoy. Yeah, so Jacoby Satterway is one of our recent site-specific commissions. This is one of our, there's only a few outdoor installations. So this one was done in 2021 with uh, in collaboration with Front Triennial. And then the Kusama uh, that I mentioned, uh, this is a donated, sculpture to us. Um, 
And this was recently relocated to our main entrance. So it greets visitors at our main campus at Cleveland. Um, and it really serves as a meeting point and a place to kind of gather. It's very recognizable. Awesome. And then I wanted to show this one since I have a, a child and my child is a frequent flyer at our local Children's yeah. Hospital Colorado because my son's medically complex. So I love this one. Yeah, this one is a fan favorite for sure. Um, it is the the first level, like entry level of our inpatient children's hospital. Um, and this was a photo sh shoot we did with a young patient who just loves the art. Um, and he's also a frequent flyer. And we were doing photography for our a publication we did a couple of years ago, and he really wanted to be included. And then the Las Vegas connection, which I love since the barrack <laughs> is in Las Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, this is a building designed by Frank Gehry in Las Vegas. It's called the Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health. And these are just uh, in, uh, like interior shots of the building. Nothing has, you know, right angles. It's all very <laughs> uh, curving and, and beautiful. It's beautiful. And then I'll let you uh, speak to your collection, Alicia, also in Las Vegas. <laughs> yes, in Las Vegas, where it's sunny today. Um, Katie, I, I'm impressed. Uh, I'm very impressed to see everything uh, that you're working on. Um, sounds like a really fun job. Um, so the Barrick Museum is in Las Vegas, as I said, and um, we are the uh, only art museum in Las Vegas. Uh, we are free and we try to make this university museum as accessible as possible. Um, we started as a natural history museum, so the collection is um, you know, we have lots of collection mysteries and lots of things that need to be researched and um, deaccessioned. Um, we're on the campus of one of the most uh, racially diverse universities in the United States. I love that about my job. Um, and uh, since about 2016, we've really changed up our um, exhibition and collection um, priorities. Um, and it's all about creating access. Um, we want visitors from K to, you know, scholars at the university um, to see themselves in the exhibitions. Um, we do a ton of programming. <laughs> uh, and I'm finding the more people I talk to that we do, we do quite a bit with limited funds um, <laughs> and, a fair, and a fairly uh, modest collection. Uh, the work's connect to Southern Nevada in very uh, abstract ways. Um, and, uh, you know, on a good year, pre-COVID, we were bringing in 75,000 visitors um, a year. So you don't think of Las Vegas as someone who, as someone, as a city that cares about the arts, right? Um, you might think about the Las Vegas Strip. If, if you've never been here, everybody has an idea about Vegas. It's not hard to get people to come. Um, but um, it is a city where the community is very supportive. Uh, and I'll get to tell you a little bit more about how we use Artwork Archive um, in this incredible system. I feel like I'm like the hype person for <laughs> Artwork, <laughs> artwork Archive. Um, I'll be able to tell you about that in, in a little bit. Cool, cool, thanks. Yeah, and I had the, the joy of um, seeing your collection in person when I was driving through from Denver to California and I got to bring my my little one through your, your exhibits and it's really impressive the work you're doing. And I'll soon cl see Cleveland Clinic's collection uh, at the National Organization of Arts and Health's conference that will be hosted there this fall. So really great yeah. connection. Looking forward to that. So location tracking, we'll focus on that first. Um, the big meat of this presentation and the benefit of being like, why well, care about location tracking? Because you can stop the art scavenger hunt, whether that's virtually through Manila folders or physically, if you're a public art collection and you're driving around a lot. And here are some benefits that I hear that I have seen um, for location tracking. Um, you'll always know where your artwork is, right? Simple as that. You'll have art, if you have artwork across campus, if it's on loan, if it's in storage, you can track its location track the details so you know what drawer within storage the print lives. You can log GPS coordinates for the public art programs for works that don't have an address, like things that may be in an alleyway or in a park. You can stay on top of loans, so manage artwork that's on the move. If you have an art lending program like Davidson College has uh, sitting in on this webinar, hi Marissa, um, or if you have out-of-state loans, 
Uh, and you can also, uh, it's a little quick, but like save your gas money. You don't have to use your CMS instead of your car to track artworks. Uh, For Culture uses us and they are a huge county public art program and they can stay on top of condition and um, status and uh, their details uh, by using their CMS and not having to drive, you know, hours. Location records. Uh, so within Artwork Archive, uh, you can track more than just an address. And here is a long list, a checklist by uh, some means. Um, by no means do you have to memorize this. Uh, this will be shared afterwards. This is just kind of like our, our guiding uh, plan as uh, Katie and Alicia jump into how they use Artwork Archive to track their locations. But you know, to read through the list, you can have sublocations, like I mentioned, drawers within a storage unit, floors or offices within buildings, um, corners on streets within um, a public art program. You can log GPS coordinates if you don't have an address. You can have location contacts at your fingertips. So if you have a loan somewhere else and you need to contact that person, or if you need to contact the person at the storage facility, you can have location notes. Um, so I've seen our clients, you know, note that not only is it on a particular hallway, but it's located next to the elevator or installed next to the fire extinguisher. If someone is going to go check in on the work. Um, you don't have to send them on that scavenger hunt. They know exactly where to find it or where it should be. <laughs> you can attach documents like floor plans, press releases, anything that pertains to that location, um, anything around the loan, contracts. One thing that I love, um, if you use Artwork Archive, you may see that you can know the cumulative value for your location, which is great for insurance. So the system auto sums uh, the values. So you can update insurance riders. You can easily create wall labels, QR codes, which we'll get into. You can see your location history. So especially if a work moves around, you're building out the provenance for that work. You can uh, stay on top of your drop-off, installation, pickup dates for these locations. Track art sales if you are doing that. Um, some nonprofits, you know, sell artworks um, as part of fundraisers. We have galleries that use us. Um, and it's just all in keeping with stewarding your collection um, and tracking that provenance and all the rich history about the, the artworks. And so at this time, I wanted to give Katie and Alicia opportunities to show how they are using location tracking for their collections. So Katie, I'll let you jump in. I'll mute myself and... Okay. Hi, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, awesome. I uh, mentioned that we have a global campus for Cleveland Clinic. So that includes more than 165 locations. So when we were shopping around for databases, um, Artwork Archive was really one of the only ones that had a feature dedicated specifically to locations. And we use this very heavily. Um, so it's perfect that I'm sitting here on a webinar to talk about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through some of the things that, that we think about when we're tracking our artwork. Um, so right now, I need to move this little, okay. Um, so right now I'm having uh, the locations that we have sorted by name, but there's a couple different ways you can sort your locations, um, including by how many artworks, how many pieces, um, either like fine art or reproductions are in the space, or you know how many reproductions are there or sales, which we don't use. Um, so I have it sorted by name. Um, and what I do to kind of keep things organized is we have a large, like sprawling main campus. So everything that um, is at main campus is a different building. So each of those start with the word main. Um, so they all come up together here. So I'm going to show you one of the locations at main. Um, you'll see like here, it tells, it tells you how many fine artwork records we have at each location and how many reproductions. I can edit uh, the location from here or show the artwork. It also tells you how many sublocations. So we're gonna click into Tossic Cancer Center, the location I have featured in my picture background. 
Um, and what we use this a lot of the times for once everything's in the space is we're looking to see, you know, I, someone mentioned that there's an artwork on the third floor that's missing a label or someone did inventory and something needs to be cleaned on the first floor. I remember that it was like a photograph and had this in it, but I couldn't remember the name. You know, we might get notes like that from non-art program people throughout the system. So then I can go into the location click on maybe the sublocation, or if I know what, based on the description, what the artist is, click on that. You can also transact things to, I call it transact, but manage your inventory where you can add inventory to the building. If something got moved here. You can also add reminders, put a date on here and what you need to be reminded about and look at that later and show the history. Those are the things I use the most. Um, I also just wanted to put a disclaimer, like anything that you see in here, I tried to remove some sensitive information for this presentation, but there are still a few things that show up. So just not to share that information with a, a bigger audience. Um, okay, so let's look at our, uh, let's look at, um, so we have all the pieces of the location kind of show up here and I can click here to look at more. It's great that everything has a thumbnail as well as a title. Um, I mentioned that we do collection posters. These are when our artists give us permission to create reproductions of their work. Um, and you can actually track those at all the locations. And then from this screen, you can either click on the image to go to that artwork record or click on the collection poster, the reproduction entry and look at that as well. So I'll show those to you in a minute. Um, so we have over 200 images in the poster program. So it's very helpful to see which ones are where. You don't wanna repeat yourself or at least, you know, repeat yourself in the same hallway. We have a lot of square footage to cover. We have over 40 million square feet. Um, so we do need to repeat ourselves <laughs> every so often. Um, the other thing that's pretty awesome is we are always trying to figure out who's the right person to contact at a location. Um, so in this case, you can actually attach a contact to a location. So we have this woman named Amy who we work with all the time and I can put in all of her information so that if anyone else is going in here without you know, the database in their brain, like I do a lot of the times, um, they can go here and say, who's that person we usually talk to? Oh, it's Amy here. Here's her phone number and her email. Um, and Elysian also mentioned all the different files that you can attach. So here um, you can click on an image to see it bigger. You can click here to download, you know, the floor plans or whatever else you put here. Uh, and if you were to click on an image, it, it'll show that to you larger and you can download it and share it with people. Um, okay, so this, is, sorry, this is kind of hard to see for me. Um, You're doing a great job though. This is very clear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, that was that. I showed that. All right, so, and then this was just a repeat by accident. Okay, so the next thing, okay, so if you're going to look into sublocations, which when our, we have two preparators on the team, and what they do on a regular basis is kind of go out to a hospital or family health center, and they bring either their phone or their iPad with them, and they can pull up artwork archive, look at this location, and sort everything by sublocation. So if we're going to do that, we look here and all the artwork is easily organized, how you put your sub location. So what I do is a building code and then the floor level. So CA is the building code for cancer, TOSIG, um, and then zero means the basement. So that is automatically showing up for me that there's 10 fine artworks to look for and they're showing them here. If I were to click into each image, I could see more. Um, and in this view, you can also, I don't, here, I can do it for here. Uh, you can also edit the location info from here, you know, kind of like see specifically like this one is left of the desk. And if I went in here to edit the location info, I can actually put like a little note, like, um, I don't know, like, like we were saying, right of the fire extinguisher or, or what have you. Um, if you were to add inventory or edit um, the transaction, you can do a start date of like March 7. Maybe this is a past thing. It was just there for like um, 20 days, 21 days. Uh, and if I search here, there's all these different filters you can put in. So you can put together collection, subject matter, um, and then say, okay, 
I'm going to assign it to this Julie Langsum, add it over here, and assign it. So then um, anything, anything that you want to look at, you just have to click on the thumbnail. Um, so this one I wanted to show you because it had examples of kind of all the things that we deal with. Um, so currently it's on view at this location. Uh, here's our sublocation and our note. But I love this location history. It actually calculates for you how long an artwork was in a certain place. Um, so it was in in our children's hospital for eight years before it was moved to where it is now. And it also tracks exhibitions. I know this isn't about exhibitions, but um, I really love this feature. So it shows up in the location history as well as the exhibition history. And then you can view the exhibition by clicking on it and have a description of that show, see all the other artworks in, in the exhibition and click on those as well to see more. We've put in like gallery installation shots of each of the exhibitions. There's also additional files like you could put in, you know, our wall text, our wall labels, any PR for the event, question and answer sessions, things like that. Um, the other thing that shows here is a publication history. I think I already mentioned we worked on a publication a couple of years ago. And so what I can do is track which page things are on and just put it in like any sort of bibliography, put that in here. Um, this artwork is part of our collection poster program. So it shows up and runs reproductions and I can click on that to see. Um, all right, we've made a lot. <laughs> we've made uh, over 33, 33 prints of this. Some of them are still in our inventory, but some of them are assigned. So you can actually go in here and edit, you know, what the inventory number is, what the price, but you can also assign it to a location by clicking on it and say assign to location and say this one is now at Akron Coli and you press assign. So these are just some of the ways we use locations. Like I said, this is just such a huge selling point for us in buying Artwork Archive. Um, so happy to share more if anyone has questions about specific things. Thanks, Katie. I also have to share that um, location record notes came from your suggestion. And then we've also had really great suggestions from Elisa, Alicia and her team as well. Um, that's one cool thing about Artwork Archive is it's not a static database, and so we're updating it. Um, so for those that are on this webinar using locations and loans, if you have any feedback for us, definitely let us know via chat. Um, it's really helpful. And Alicia, I wanted to give you time, too, as well, to walk through how you as a museum and a museum connected to a university, um, how you're thinking about locations and tracking it. Sure. Um, I could tell a little story. Is this a good time to do so? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about something that was uh, new for us. Um, here we go. Share. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Um, this was new for us. I, this is 2021, April 19th, 2021, throes of COVID. Um, we received uh, a call and email from Representative Congresswoman Susie Lee. Uh, and she she wanted to um, take some works on loan to her office in DC to represent Nevada. And this was a huge um, honor for us. We had never done anything like it. Um, you can see this cool logo that um, right here, the Nevada, um, NVDC that my uh, exhibition designer made. <laughs> um, I also love, um, Katie, I love the exhibition feature. Um, it's super helpful for us. Um, for um, our collection manager and our student workers, um, our researchers, things like that. So this, um, this was really interesting. Um, Susie Lee uh, ended up texting me because I was out of the museum sick with COVID. <laughs> I have her, her cell number, yes I do. Um, and she asked if she could take these works on loan. It was so helpful um, for me to be able to send her a room of artwork that um, we suggested for her, her um, office. And we have a loaning program. It goes out to different departments at the university. We're surrounded by science buildings and they need art. 
Um, so it's very easy to go like, oh, I really want um, this work to go to DC. I was at home sick with COVID and from my cell phone, I could do this. It was incredible. Um, check the locations, double check, make sure everything was in good condition. I sent her a link, link and she ended up going through our entire collection and picked works um, that were super important to um, Nevada. Um, this one in particular is by Zuli Bahia, who was a student at the time. This is a portrait of her mother um, in red, white, and blue who immigrated um, from Peru uh, to build a better life for Zuli. Um, Fritz Scholder, Colleen Browning, local artist uh, Bobby Ann Howell, and Marisol. Um, and we have to do occasional uh, checkups on these. Uh, they've been on loan ever since, um, and it's just so helpful. Um, before, we would have to uh, export, like P make and then export PDFs of everything, um, which is takes up a ton of time and is not as pretty as artwork archive. Um, you can you can see a video, right, of a ceremony and then pictures of uh, where they hang in the office. And this was all in collaboration with her team. Um, so you can see that. I thought, I just love this idea. And it's a, it's a point of pride for the university, right? The president came out, met the student, met her mom. Um, and it, it, it happened because it had to happen quickly. And because of Artwork Archive, we were able to do so. Um, what do you think? Is that good? Do you yeah. want me to talk more? Anything else? <laughs> um, uh, no, this is great. And we can, we can get yeah. into the loan tracking a little bit. Uh, sure. Later. Yeah, that was really wonderful. And I love that example. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks everyone for, you know, sticking with us as we like swap sharing screens around. Uh, what is going on with my computer? Of course, here we go. And so that was really helpful to see uh, how both Katie and Alicia are thinking about location tracking, the different use cases, using it within um, Artwork Archive. Um, another great opportunity for you guys to just also not hear me blab along. <laughs> it's good to hear from people using uh, the platform and the real use cases. Um, another thing um, I wanted to call out when it comes to location tracking is how important it is to create the reports around those locations. And so uh, here is a screenshot of an inventory report from Davidson College from a previous webinar that we hosted about academic institutions. Um, and I believe Marissa ran this report, report for all the artworks that were in the president's house because they had a new president uh, coming in, so selecting new artworks. We see our clients creating checklists, insurance reports, condition reports, QR codes, portfolio pages, wall labels, all which you can do within Artwork Archive. Um, and I'm just gonna show, show an example of, of one that's really popular and that being an insurance report. And so within Artwork Archive, if you click new report, inventory reports produce thumbnails. Um, and so a really great report um, for insurance purposes. You can give it a title, you can templatize it. So Stanford Children's Health uh, runs these reports a lot uh, to update the insurance rider um, for their locations, especially storage facilities. And so by saving it as a template, all they have to do is change the artworks and not the data, the information that is being included. So here you can click a button to include insurance values. If I scroll down, you have a number of data options. Um, so location, location record notes, if it's for insurance, then you want to include condition and condition notes. You can always send high res images, notes, and then the logic. And so here we are for location tracking. So let's use the location. And so let's run the report for the Northwest storage facility. If I scroll down, you can add all those pieces, generate the report. And then when you click into reports, it will live here. And if I go into a inventory report for the storage facility, 
here you can see that you have the locations, the insurance values. So really helpful. Um, if you're using Artwork Archive, I highly suggest playing around in the, the reports for your locations. QR codes also being used within storage facilities or when artworks are dropped off, if they are wrapped, uh, you can print the QR code on a reformatted label, affix it to the artwork. And so then when um, you have to figure out what is behind that brown paper, <laughs> you can scan the QR code and you'll be brought to your artwork archive object record to see what it is, where it's supposed to be, where it's supposed to be off to, any information. And wall labels, like Katie was saying, if there's an artwork without a wall label, you can quickly uh, print that off. Or if it's for a new location, a new exhibition, you can create those labels. I also wanted to call attention to our interactive map. So one of the wonderful things, especially for the public art programs here, the hospitals, um, academic institutions that have artwork spread across a campus, is that you can make this all publicly viewable and use the map to drive traffic, to drive people awareness to your locations. Um, that's where, as you can see here, GPS coordinates are great because you can drill down exactly where in the park it is. You can create walking tours, You know, send this link off and have people explore a part of town, part of campus. Um, like I mentioned, my son um, has treacher Collins syndrome, a rare genetic syndrome, uh, bringing us into the hospital often. And our children's hospital in Colorado has um, scavenger hunts, like for the outdoor sculpture garden. They have them for the NICU and the PICU for, for families that are stuck in those areas. And so a really lovely way um, to get people out and about and experiencing your um, collection in new ways. There's also, and I'm gonna show you, um, let me pull up. I'm going to pull up where me. Uh, GPS coordinates also lend themselves to Google Maps. So you can have driving directions. Uh, I'm showing Cheyenne Laramie County's public art program. They're great. They're doing such wonderful work uh, with their collection. And I'm in the map. If I click in, here we go, Medical Center. You can see what artwork is at the Medical Center. If I click in to see what is at this park, I can see the works that are the Botanic Gardens. If I click into this piece, I can see the location. And then here, Google Maps, let's drive. Also, are, is this gonna show where my home address is? No, <laughs> I shouldn't test that before. And here I can get myself. You guys can all visit me in Denver, I don't mind. <laughs> So that's the interactive map. And for those that are new to Artwork Archive, um, I was talking about it in such like, you know, terminology of like, you must know. So, you know, Artwork Archive, we are an art database. By default, we are private. Great for all the admin um, inventory management. But if you ever did want to make artwork, uh, your, your collection public, you can do so. Um, uh, Alicia uses it. Uh, she embeds the collection onto her website, onto the UNLV website, onto the museum's website. You can also embed this map as well. So tracking loans. Like I mentioned, uh, really excited to show a sneak peek of our new location tools. So for those that are using Artwork Archive to date, we had a loan status. You could track things that were on loan. Uh, what we have done now is um, done you better. <laughs> so now you can track loans in and you can track loans that are out and you can have it all in one consolidated place with more information. And why is that important? Because it's hard enough to keep track of like artwork, you know, inside your gallery walls. Once it leaves your gallery walls, whether it's for an art lending program on campus, um, you know, off to DC, um, you want to make sure like, you know, when they're going, when they're coming back, where they are, if they're not on site, um, and have all that information accessible in one place. And like Leisha was saying, even manage it from your cell phone if you wish. And you get to preserve the information for future employees um, and community members so you don't lose that institutional knowledge. And here I have a screenshot from our staging platform. And you'll see on the right-hand side under current location that this piece by Homer Winslow is on loan at the Cape Ann Museum. 
I grew up in Gloucester, Massachusetts, so I like using them as our location. You can see how long the loan is for. And then if I click into this screenshot um, of our cute little hamster, um, I think it's a hamster, you can see within acquisition details in the upper right hand corner that this piece has been loaned in on it's on loan on in your collection from Kathleen Carey for how much the duration and the duration is passed. Um, it was returned yesterday. So you can see uh, that it has indeed been returned and you can see the within location history um, that uh, it is back at her, uh, her location. And you can see within status in the bottom left-hand side that it is returned to her. I am going to now click into our staging. So I'm showing staging because we have not yet released loan feature. I got the okay from our uh, product team to show it because we're about to launch it. So be on the lookout if you um, are on our free trial or a paid uh, client uh, that you will be seeing this in your organization account shortly. Um, but what is great is that we'll go back to the hamster and to call attention to now you can keep track of the works that are loaned into your collection. If I click into Kathleen Carey, the location, I can see um, that this is indeed back there. I can add files, um, you know, if it was the contract with her, any documentation, maybe there's a treatment plan. If I click back into the piece, um, when the loan is over, the system will automatically mark it as returned to owner. If I go back to pieces, if it has been returned to the owner, it is no longer in your inventory. It is no longer on site. And so now it will be hidden. It will be archived. It will still be part of your collection, your historical narrative, um, but it won't be part of your day-to-day. Your -day. It won't be cluttering that. And then how do you mark a piece as being loaned in? Here we go. Here's one of my dad's paintings. I'm daughter of an artist. Um, you can click edit. And within acquisition details, like how did it come into your collection? You'll now see loaned in. And if I click that, I can enter a start date, an end date. If I'm recording something from the past, because now this is this is new in your collection, um, you can mark that it has indeed been returned, the value. And then if the person is already in your uh, database, um, you can select their name or you can create a new contact for them. So that's for loans in. Another thing to call out, you can quickly find the works that have been loaned into your collection. If I go to the more filter and click loan, oops, sorry, if I click acquisition type and select loaned in, I'll see all the pieces that have been loaned in to my collection. How many times can I say loan and collection? <laughs> okay, so that's the inbound. What about the outbound? Okay. Another piece by Papa McNiff. <laughs> so um, you have this piece and you are going to loan it out. Let's loan it out to Alicia. Alicia, do you want one of my dad's paintings here? So what we'll, what you can do, you can either click the loan out button here in the upper bar, or as you can see under current location, you can assign it um, via here as well. So let's click here because I'm already here. So the loan out. If you are loaning it to a location that you have already worked with, you can select them from the drop down if they've already been entering your database, or you can create a new record, a new location by name or contact. 
Let's do the Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art. It is currently there. I'm 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 behind. I gotta I'm I'm logging things. We actually shipped it to you a long time ago. We shipped it to you. On- <laughs> I love it. I think it's a great piece. <laughs> Thanks. And it's coming back this Friday. I'm like really behind. Um, <laughs> and it's out on loan. You have it. And then uh, per contract, this painting has to be in the lobby. I don't know. Whatever notes you need. If I save it, then ta-da. Under current location, I see that it is A, on loan, where it's on loan to. Alicia has it. I have the notes. So I'll see when is it supposed to be coming back. And then when you look under location history, you'll have the dates. You'll see that it was on loan. If I click into the Museum of Art, I don't have other details like Katie had because I just made it, um, like location and contacts. But you can see that this piece is indeed on loan. And if I click back into it, you can also change the status to on loan. So we also have that additional filter as well, if you would uh, like it. Because then if you need to see all the loans that are at um, Alicia's, you can look it up by location, but you can also um, filter by what is on loan currently and see everything that's on loan. And so all these pieces are off to new homes. And then lastly, let me see. Um, If you are using the public profile, if you are making information public, you can share the status of your your piece. Um, So you can share that it is on loan. You can also make that private if you don't want your uh, loaning status is out there. But, you know, if it's important to you to show the breadth and how you're getting your collection out there in communities, then you can have that uh, status here um, on the, the public profile and see where the piece is. So that's a sneak peek of our new update to the loan feature. If you are currently using on loan um, as your uh, status for inbound or outbound, we are going to be um, not green lighting. We're going to be moonlighting. We are going to be um, ending that part, sunsetting, sunsetting that part of the platform at the end of May. We'll have communications out so that you can use this new feature, which will give you much better tracking um, and record keeping uh, here within the, the platform. And again, more information will be coming of that. Um, anything to add, Katie and Alicia, um, after about loans. Um, just someone in the comments said they were very excited about this feature. And I said, I agree because I was using a combination of um, like inventory numbers that started with the, like L-O-A-N, like loan. And then um, in the location and sublocations, like indicating whether it was like returned or, or loaned in. Um, so I love to have this specific feature for it. With my background in public art and museums, like I've been like I have been rooting for this release, and so I'm really I'm really excited. And actually, a lot of it came from feedback with with our clients. I did a lot of phone calls, um, so did my colleagues to make sure that it really really fits everyone's needs. With that being said, for those that are, are using Artwork Archive or interested in our platform, we do work with a number of size types of collections, types of institutions, um, and so you know one size won't fit all but hopefully it will, um, you know, be a great solution for you all. And if you do have feedback, just let us know. Uh, Feel free to chat us or contact me directly if you have my email. We're happy to connect. I did want to save uh, time for for questions. Um, This slide will be part of the resources shared out. Um, Editorial content about, um, you know, this topic of location tracking, our collection management on the go, as well as some helpful help docs. Um, we have a blog, the link below Cassidy, if you don't mind just, uh, copying and pasting the blog link into the chat, that would be great. Um, where you can learn more collection management insights, strategies, best practices. Um, and then, um, Cassidy, if you could also copy and paste the link to our newsletter, uh, you can set up for a newsletter and every week we'll be letting you know about new articles, new webinars like this. 
I have a webinar coming up at the end of uh, April about charitable art donations for both the receiving institution and for the individual collector, the donor, um, with some great lawyers and uh, panelists. And if you're interested in Artwork Archive, um, just letting you know that we do run a lifetime free 30% discount to nonprofits and that you can learn more about us at our organizations page. The questions, let me pull up the, the Q&A. With, okay, first question. With the location tracking feature, how different is it from the one that Google has? Uh, that's a good question for me to start with because I don't understand the, the question as in um, our map feature, our interactive map feature. Um, if I'm reading that correctly, um, our interactive map is a part of your profile. It can be embedded on your website and it actually is hosted right, by Google Maps. And so that is how uh, we show the locations. Um, and so it shows uh, the address and the location for your artwork. Um, so it's actually hosted by Google Maps. Um, and I think that's the only question because I think the other two is just uh, chats. Um, let's see. Yeah, there, there were a couple that I was answering as we were going. There you go. Thanks, Katie. So if you, if you click on answer, you can see some of them. Cool. Um, we're, we're multitasking. I love it. Um, are customized report layouts available? Sometimes the margins, et cetera, are a little large. Um, this is a question from a, a client of ours about customization of report layouts. Um, and so... I will take that feedback to the team. Sometimes, and Cassidy may be better explaining this because she does our product education, um, margins may change a little bit depending on the layout of your, um, your artwork um, or the type of report that you are creating. If you could, uh, Scott, send us a chat about which particular report you find the margins to be too large, we'll, we'll look into it. There is a rhyme and a reason for our reports, <laughs> for the, the layouts and, and how we format them, but we're we're always innovating upon our, our features. Is there anything in the chat? Um, any questions? Can I just add to the report thing? Because um, I also um, often need to do more custom things. And the one I use the most is the inventory report. And what I have found is even though they save as PDF, if you open them in Word, you can not quite, not very easily, but you can add text to it and kind of move things around. So if it's something simple where you just need to add notes um, or something like that, you can just open the PDF in Word and edit from there. Great. We've, we've done the same. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could also do it in Adobe too. But. <laughs> yeah. Any any other questions? Let me see Q and A. There's a ton in the in the chat. Ah, I gotta go digging in the chat. Let's see. One of them was something that my ears perked up to um, from Carrie. Uh, to clarify my previous comment, I don't know if I'd want to loan a loan to be automatically marked as returned to owner until I knew for sure that transport had actually taken place. Um, yeah. This was in comment. You know, once the loan. Uh, is ended, it automatically updates uh, as returned. Yeah. So would um, let's let's use the since we have not released this this feature yet. I under understand that. Um, would you rather manually update the status as return to owner? Do you not want it to auto populate? Because I understand that you know there's the shipping time. Yeah, absolutely. We would want to manually do so. Um, you know, the info is there that the original contract says that the 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 loan is till such and such date. But sometimes we send it back to them sooner when an exhibition has finished, or vice versa. Yeah, and a reminder. So we do have reminders attached to um, dates. So exhibition dates, install, um, drop off, pick up. Um, location uh, records if something is going to be dropped off, installed at the location. And so I'll bring it to the team that a notification um, that your, your loan is ending um, or that your loan has ended and needs to be shipped out. Um, that could be helpful as well. Thanks, Carrie. 
Anything else? Any questions about the new the loan fee? <laughs> any any questions about the loan feature? Um, I'm gonna scroll through the the chat. Um, Cassidy, have you seen anything that I might not have since I was blabbing? Regarding loans, I'm looking. There was one from Sue that I thought was an interesting question because she has two separate artwork archives to manage different businesses, and much of the art is used in both. And so she asked, can we replicate entries from one to the other without starting from scratch, perhaps create an inventory report to send to the other that could be received into the other? I thought that was an interesting question on how people manage having multiple accounts. Yeah, I'm wondering, I'm just talking, thinking off the top of my head. Um, Sue, if you don't know of the um, artist upload form, uh, you can use that to transfer um, records. Let me just click out and show. So if you have two different um, accounts, if you have um, a contact record for your other account within the account that you want to receive the artworks, um, you can give your other account access to send artworks directly in and uh, records directly in. And the receiving accounts, the one that will be sending it out, uh, when you click that link, it'll be brought to your account and you'll just click the artworks and send them over to the other account. Does that make sense? This is typically used to allow um, artists to upload artworks directly into your account. If you are managing temporary exhibitions, you're acquiring a lot. Um, this way the artist populates with images and, and information. And if they're an artwork archive artist, then they can uh, just again, select the artworks and send them over to you. And so that may be, that may be a help. That could be a way to do it. Give it a try. Um, and if it doesn't let, let me know, let our team know, and we can talk about transferring those, those duplicates for your, your account. Any other? That is just what I used. Yep, and Tia said she uses the same thing. Great. The artist upload form is awesome for anyone who isn't using it. And if you're if you're okay to relinquish that control, some some collections don't like using it. They just want to control their own admin, but. Um, especially for temporary ex exhibitions. If you're doing a lot of calls, um, it's a great way to populate your account with, with artworks um, coming up for shows. We have another minute. Um, any other questions that I might have missed? So uh, someone said, when will this loan in and out function be available for users? There you go. I'm just going to read that one. Um, hopefully Friday morning. That is that is the the goal, and so we're going to re release it on Thursday, and I know it'll be available on Friday morning. And then you'll have for those that are artwork archive clients, you'll get plenty of education and notification from us. You'll get an email. You'll have like a little chat from me, being like, "Hi, it was released." Um, and I'm also going to do like a shorter webinar about loans once it's launched as an educational tool because it is different from what we were previously doing within the platform. So you can tune into that little. Uh, mini webinar. But yep, at the end of the week, she'll be live on Friday. Oh, and Sue saying that she's been using private notes instead. This is great. And for you, those that are not familiar with Artwork Archive, this is why I love working with us because we're constantly changing things to make it better. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we are a minute past time because I am chatty. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, I hope you all uh, enjoyed this webinar. I want to send share a huge thanks to Alicia and Katie. Um, they are incredible professionals that I'm in awe of and your collections are beautiful and impactful and you're doing such important work um, uh, with your institution. So thank you, thank you for joining. Thank you um, and everybody, thank you for giving us space. Um, so happy to be here. Okay. Same, thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Okay, bye thank bye. you everyone.